Welcome everyone to another episode of Around the Block Talk. Today we have with us Mr. Rahul Sethi. He has over two dec- decades of experience in the uh, technology industry. He is an uh, influencer in this in the space of metaverse on LinkedIn and have worked with many global brands on this uh, particular subject. So very happy to have you here today with us Rahul. Uh, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you Pratik. Um really appreciate um, you know your um, persistence on uh, bringing this session together for for many 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 weeks i i really appreciate your you giving your time over the weekend you know uh, and uh, thank you very much to the ids company you know for hosting me uh, to the management team for this lovely initiative uh, that all your teams are putting together it, it's very hard to do it and uh, i think uh, content creation by bringing people um, uh, you know people whom we have never known but still going and you know talking to them bringing them around is is a lot of work so kudos to the team and um, I really appreciate uh, the initiative uh, uh, thank but, you very much rahul we can uh, continue so uh, for everyone who is uh, looking at this um, uh, webinar um, um, i have been in the in the enterprise tech space for over 22 years now and uh, i have um, I started very early in my career I started at about 21 years old so you know as I'm as I'm still not 55 so it's just that over a period of time I have, the natural progression has been that I love technology and I've continued to work in the technology space and uh, always updated myself uh, in 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 whatever best you know uh, that excites me and uh, um and 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 that I can develop a uh, passion around it so I represent a company uh, called the Web3. Uh, we are a uh, Web3 and Metaverse company. Uh, we work with uh, brands across India and now outside of India, and uh, we design uh, their Metaverse strategy. You know, um, and um, it's very exciting. It's extremely exciting uh, because um, though Metaverse uh, has come into um, more of a limelight around October or November of last year, uh, when uh, facebook changed their name from uh, facebook to now meta however uh, what it has actually changed in in the lives of people is uh, that at least they are ready to hear about it you know and um, um, and it's an exciting uh, experience uh, uh, tech i think it's, it's it's here to here to be um, it's not going anywhere and when people say to me hey metaverse is future i generally go tell them no it's not future because i'm talking to you about metaverse today So it's present. So uh, glad to be here. Thank you. Right, indeed. So uh, with that, Rahul, uh, we can start with the topic of our discussion today, and which is around metaverse. So we would love to hear on th- your uh, thoughts on what exactly is metaverse, and uh, what does it mean for uh, the general population in the coming future. Great. So this is a question that. Um, Uh, that has to be answered in in a very simplistic format, as simple as possible. Um, you see, we <clears throat> we we have been uh, experiencing immersive content for a long time. You know, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, and most recently, mixed reality uh, came into existence. Uh, this AR and VR has been in for the last thirty years plus. You know, and perhaps. it is the next level of content disposition in in a way that there is there is it has progressed over over a period of time we started with web 1 uh, when i still remember those days in 2005 when i started my first company we used to make discussion forums then for clients um 2005 or 6 is when facebook and social media started to come into existence i have been a member of linkedin since 2005 and um, i've extensively used social media to create uh, a good reputation as a tech professional excuse me as a tech professional and uh, it has truly helped me uh, create my own personal brand however web2 um, has just not helped me web2 has created a creator economy of an extent that is unbelievable people have made millions of dollars by putting their content on social media 
um, with the integration of YouTube and other social media platform, TikTok's video revolution that came in has truly upgraded the experience of people, you know, to an immense extent. But everywhere we saw a centralized economy being built because domain is owned by GoDaddy or domain is not owned by them. Domain is being um, registered on the on the registry, but being controlled by them. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the fiasco of Net for India, when they suddenly shut the shop and some, you know, hundreds and thousands of websites went offline in just a matter of few hours um, is centralized. Um, content on general social media, including Facebook's The World or others, uh, of course, is very centralized. I mean, we are we we are looking at the majority of large organizations uh, having to control um, larger set of data around the world with with the, just a few players. Uh, LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft. Facebook is owned by you know uh, uh, by by Facebook. Facebook Meta. We've got Insta and so on and so forth. WhatsApp certainly centralized. On the other hand, we've got YouTube, Google, you know, the whole Google uh, algorithm. So it's it's very centralized. And what is what has what has always been an issue with is is with the privacy, you know, of the content that we are putting onto the social media. And this is where I think a certain set of people continue to think of creating a more decentralized um, infrastructure. And that set of people, when they continue to think around it, some of them, um, like like the Bitcoin founder, Mr. Santoshi, they 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 are the ones who started with 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 the first, I think, with the first revolution. They were the starting point. So blockchains started to come into existence. Um, decentralization started to happen, um, and blockchain has been in for a very long time. I think. I probably have have heard about blockchain since about 10 or 12 years and to be honest with you in those times I was not even interested in looking at, de at decentralization because I think we were we were at a very early stage of realizing what we are losing in that too, you know now with the decentralization of um, of the internet um, the question really was Okay, we are going to have lots of lots and lots of tokens, lots and lots of different types of cryptos, but are we just a crypto economy of just gambling it around and you know just 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 transacting on a crypto, or can we have more D apps on it and we can build some models around DeFi, or we can you know have certainly some DAOs uh, came into existence, and the question really was then about how and what is going to be done now, what what next? So while infrastructures on different Web3 decentralized platforms were starting to build, I think one of the business cases people found was collaboration. Because unless and until we will not collaborate with each other, decentralization and dApps apps are not really going to change anything. So, so, so with that, I think the experience creation question probably came into the minds of some of the some of the early adopters uh, who thought, well now it's time for us to go and create some parallel universe where we can have people create experiences and the question or the the question was what what is that to be called i think someone had to take the first uber advantage and said okay it's called metaverse because it's a parallel world a uniquely designed experience for for people who want to live in the virtual world you know and that's how metaverses have come into existence and metaverses are not owned by one central entity uh, these are all very these are all being based on several different types of decentralized you know networks and um, and now with the with, with newer opportunities of creating uh, you know digital assets on those um, on those metaverse platforms people are now thinking of going ahead and doing more commerce around it and we've all heard so much about nfts in the last one year i think it's been a it's been a revolution of its kind you know when uh, nobody thought that just a single Frank A painting could be sold for so many hundreds of thousands of dollars or the other board A can be sold for millions of dollars and so on and so forth. So it's, I think, a natural progression in terms of, you know, the technology. And it, it's always, it's it's only going to stay here. So Metaverse is a, Metaverse is based on a certain platform 
which in my view, the best is decentralized platform where it's open for public and then you can go create your own digital assets for enhancing your brand image, bringing more engagement on it and do a hundreds and hundreds and thousands of other things that people are exploring, uh, you know, at this juncture. Right, indeed. Uh, so Rahul, you explained us uh, the fact that Metaverse should be a public space primarily. It should not be controlled with a single entity. And uh, now that, so uh, today we're seeing a lot of the Metaverses coming up. So Sandbox, Decentraland, also some, some in India also. So uh, how do you see the future of development of Metaverse? You know, what are the things that are going to happen and what will happen with so many Metaverses? Yeah, I mean, uh, think of it, right? So, sit, so I mean, uh, let's come back to the physical world because this, this question, I will start with the physical world. The place where I live is Noida. And I live on the expressway, uh, which is halfway to Greater Noida. So my home is, uh, where I am right now, there's an expressway parallel to my home. Uh, if I go 15 kilometers this side, I go to Greater Noida. I come 15 kilometers this side is Noida Central. Now, Noida Central has got a mall, which is called the Mall of India. Hmm? And then I've got on the other side in Greater Noida, I have a mall called the Venice Mall. In the Venice Mall, you have H&M, you have other brands, showrooms, whatever. But the footfall is just a few hundreds, maybe thousand, maybe very limited, not in not in a lot of thousands, you know. But when you go to Mall of India, there it is in hundreds and thousands of people who are coming over the weekend. So when you make your infrastructure and you want to go create or launch a brand, of course you will go to a place where there is more footfall. So why the number of companies will want to create their own blockchain based metaverses, the one successful will be where you have got footfall. The so second point is the, the mall, of no, mall of India in Noida has certain types of people coming in because they are most likely going to be people from within the 20 kilometers periphery of that mall, maybe 25. Generally, we don't go to a mall which is 100 kilometers from my home, right? People don't do that, right? People go to the nearest mall. You know, they would rather take a little bit, a uh, few kilometers here and there, but it still cannot be 100 kilometers. So, right. so and now if you go to the same uh, socket mall in Delhi, you know, which is the which is the one of the most sought after malls, that, or the mall in the South Point, which is of course a uh, uh, you know a very very big mall over there. Of course, the kind of people coming over there are, are different, you know, because th there is a different class of people, right? So in right. Delhi, in Basant Kun, there is a Basant Vihar, there is different class of people who come, and of course there you will have showrooms which are very high end, five star showrooms. You will have a same place in Mall of India, you will, you will have five star showrooms, but not the five star showrooms of that place. And similarly, you go to Mumbai or you go to other places, of course, those malls are more elevated depending on the kind of people, the class of people that's around that mall. And that's how the mall business works. In Metaverse is also, I believe the same, I believe in the same principle. You, anyone for that matter can go and launch a Metaverse platform, build it around some, you know, do minting on certain blockchain, go ahead, go make the blocks, come to the market, have a go to market strategy, go do pre-mint, mint, whatever, end of the day, you have to know what is your audience. So every Metaverse platform has been built around something called a customer persona. On a decentralized end, I should not go and make an office space on decentralized. Doesn't make sense, you know. I don't want to go and create a uh, create a game where I, I I where I know wherein I know that the, the the professional gamers are not coming off on on that scale as much as they are coming on OxyWorld for that matter or Roblox for that matter, you know. So every metaverse platform hence has got a, a certain customer persona and that's a good news you know that's a very good news because uh, you can choose which metaverse platform you want to go um, the the last submission on the same question would be that and, and it's an extension in terms of you know the the uh, the messaging that i want to send it out through this uh, communication today is that 
not only that it really depends on which metaverse are we going to choose i think metaverses are always going to be continuing to come up and 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 there is going to be the ones who have entered and they have become now fully functional and that there is not much not much left in it and the transactions are not happening whereas there is a possibility of other metaverse platform extracting their user base to that other platform you know so so like the way in the 90s we used to use netscape a lot hmm? in the 2000 we used microsoft explorer a lot next to the era we used firefox a lot then after that chrome a lot but then going forward it can be it possible that other you know uh, other browsers might come so what has happened is it is the same concept what has happened is that over the period of time the customer expectation have changed so metaverse business is very competitive business the platforms that are that today they are coming up if they are not thinking of a long term implications of of how their consumer would move from a metaverse to metaverse i think they're missing out the game you know so this is this is also important to note you know for for companies who are thinking of launching newer and newer metaverses uh, and and of course uh, uh, for brands or companies before they choose any any metaverse they must know the objective they must know why they want to do it where they want to do it what kind of people are going to come in and then they should choose uh, you know um, uh, the platform right indeed so uh, in your view point uh, in the development of metaverse we're going to see some niche metaverses each with their own or set of audience and their own set of persona coming on to them so uh, today we also see a lot of brands and lot of uh, companies today exploring the space of metaverse and so it's it's just still it's still a little overwhelming for a lot of them what they can do on metaverse what are the possibilities with it because it's all exploratory in nature today so uh, how can these brand or how can these companies leverage metaverse and as you were mentioning that they should they should have a clear vision of why they are doing it so uh, in let's say you have to advise a company on you know how to and why to go to metaverse so what what are how would you do that i think they uh, i think the first step would be uh, why do you want to go to metaverse you know i think the the the, the answer which i have, which i am getting right now is this okay i've been asked a lot of times what is the roi of metaverse you know and uh, i've been doing a lot of this <clears throat> a lot of research <clears throat> excuse me i've been doing a lot of research in in terms of what really is the roi of metaverse so let's 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 look at these two questions in 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 the context of what company should do so first thing is why do you want to go to metaverse is reason is one the first one i believe right now for brands and companies is a fomo fear of missing out okay they, uh, for some reason they all want to go because they have a fomo but then as soon as they will go deep dive into it they have these questions and then suddenly they it will fizzle out you know saying oh, okay this can be done that can be done blah 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 okay let's now do it later the second thing is the second important thing is companies who are unable to create a link between their product and the customer or the audiences that are coming on to the metaverse so it's very simple somebody made a nft a shoe nft for a uh, for a concert that happened on the central land about a year back and sold that for half a million dollars in some 24 hours there was a big news about that you know concert and what someone did with the shoe because the avatar of the singer was also wearing the similar shoe and there was certainly only there was certainly only limited number of shoes as nft so hence those shoes are today also being traded those nfts are being traded today even on opens the second part is they the the second part which i said was about how and why companies are unable to link the their products with the kind of audience which is coming on the metaverse and that has to be i think uh, very much defined properly the third part is when 
the organizations want to do it and the, and there are serious organizations who want to do it they have to think of a long term strategy this is not this is not something where hey i will go and make something on the metaverse then i will go do a couple of you know campaigns here and there and and that's it web3 community is web3 communities are communities which don't believe in web2 today you and me are doing this um, uh, particular uh, you know session on a zoom you and i know that there was a big news about zoom being a chinese company in those days when the covid happened and zoom and zoom was zooming and suddenly there was this you know news came in that oh all these video recording have been captured all these companies are you know doing all their uh, uh, um, all their um, uh, confidential discussions on the zoom and 100% things that are being recorded on zoom are being controlled by a centralized company i mean come on it's true now it it's never going to be deleted because when i go any when i do any kind of a streaming like i was doing a streaming with just before our call i told you that streaming on linkedin goes i mean it's 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 purely on linkedin whether they want that streaming to be online over there or not end of the day it's not it's not decentralized so web3 people are different that's a whole new community that is the people who don't believe in this you know web2 or a, or a social media facebook no they are they are on discord i mean it's so it's so surprising to me it's so surprising to me and technology has always surprised people you know i mean the generations have been surprised by technology that a few days back i got a request of connection from my daughter who is 10 years old on discord and when i went back to my son who is now studying 10th and i spoke to him about discord he knows more than this more discord than me he was talking to me about the servers that they are putting together they are creating those servers and they are on discord so again why discord and why not the same uh, you know uh, slack for that matter because companies are creating servers on discord because they don't want other people to come and you know share information on centralized platforms so the, the the gen z you know or the or the newer generation that is coming in they want to be on these decentralized platforms and let me tell you with the whole the daos and the defi you know uh, uh, initiatives that have been taken right now they are going to ch change this uh, they will have an ultra impact on the whole paradigm the whole paradigm shift will happen you know so when Gen Z and they have a very clear vision of them going to that particular Web3 community. They have to disconnect themselves from Web2, Web2 or existing people. I think they have to understand that Web3 is the newer generation. That's a different people with a different mindset. So the day people have a clear distinction that this side is something which is being covered by marketing and digital agencies, this side. Is what we want to cover, cover, you know, cover, and then we will want to create metaverse experiences. The last, the the the, the, the last point about this whole, you know, the, about if I go to metaverse now, what happens? You know, uh, that's that's one more question, right? So the the, the so here here there are two things. Okay? One is, well, when you go to metaverse, you really cannot just go and make a store and say, oh, I'm happy with it. I mean, it doesn't end there. You know, you got to have a strategy. You want to go. You have to go ahead. You have to go build your own NFTs. You'll have to create membership reward programs that can have people earn um, uh, the earn the uh, the points and uh, uh, oh sorry, not points. Sorry, here in this case, earn rewards. Okay, in in some form or the other, and 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 then also maybe do it do do it in some way in collaboration where you are able to attract the influencers in web3 community you know so just alone plain metaverse experience will not help brands and organizations like i said it is a full flow of things that one has to do and and that's what we do when i when i go and work with organizations or brands who are looking at uh, you know metaverse and web3 as an opportunity uh, i have to go sit down and you know work with them create a roadmap on the metaverse and then say okay by and let's go tick 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 and then and that roadmap we have to follow it you know now going forward in the long term 
So it's a very long term opportunity and it's very important I think for for the brands to move into this space because um, uh, they will get time to um, learn a few things. In fact, more than that, they will get time to unlearn a few things. Right. Indeed. So uh, as you mentioned that uh, uh, a thought out strategy is important for the company and how they're going to get there. Also, there are a lot of barriers to adoption to Metaverse today. So is it only available on VR? Can people ac uh, access it? to the phone or uh, to the PCs. So uh, I think the company has to consider both the aspects of it, how they're going to get traffic to it and what they can eventually do with it. So you know, what are your views on, on that and how can companies actually get traffic on their metaverse, even if they have it? And wh how, what kind of an economy or what kind of an ecosystem do you see uh, forming when all these people onboard into metaverse and all, all these companies have their own metaverse. Yeah, so, uh, what had happened was uh, uh, one of my posts went viral into this um, uh, Discord server and um, uh, in a couple of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, communities and of course also on LinkedIn. When I thought that most companies will spend more money on Web2 to be popular in Web3. Yes. Simple. Indeed. Companies, companies will spend more money popularizing web 3 in web 2 okay right. <laughs> technically because there is no way that you can simply go and put money and start doing campaigns on the on the web 3 yes yes oh it, it's not possible i mean you can't do that <laughs> and right now we are not there what's really happening is that um, the what's really happening is that that um, that oh yeah and one of the thing uh, you know when it comes to this sort of com com commercial um, uh, you know transactions around web 2 and web 3 and giving promotions here and there companies are using metaverses for more of tactical branding and engagement you know sort of uh, with with that mindset okay um, now now the now this thing comes up okay saying fine i want to choose a metaverse all right now the most popular metaverse decentralized metaverse is decentralized you know and i'm a firm believer it's it's a good platform you know um as of today it's doing well um, i'm disclaimer i'm not a promoter of of decentralized but as of today it kind of makes sense to me um and decentralized doesn't need a vr it is not vr supported today i'm, I'm today talking second july 2021 Okay, I, I don't know tomorrow, maybe a week later, if they have a VR support. But as of today, they don't. Whereas, it's all accessible on the web. So this myth of of a, of a metaverse in a VR headset, I, I'm, and by the way, on the, on the other hand, Horizons, the Facebook platform, the meta platform, only works on VR. You know? So, like I said, so every metaverse has their, has their own structure and depending on has their has their own you know text infrastructure it is only getting evolved if we go to more of a centralized spatial kind of a you know tool where we are using it for more of corporate you know uh, good to have uh, you know avatars ready ready player me integrated with it and all that of course there you can use vr so this is this is a sort of a very big misconception that for accessing metaverses you need a VR headset. Uh, however, when you access any supported metaverse on VR using a VR headset, let me tell you that experience is something that people won't forget so easily. So it's very interesting, you know. Uh, but to clarify, not not every metaverse or for every immersive experience, we need a VR headset. No, that's not right. That's not true. Right. Indeed. So it's possible to access with phone as well and with your PC as well. So that would uh, make the adoption easier in that sense. Exactly. Exactly. On a on a on a on a PC, at least on a Mac, uh, the experience looks very good. Uh, but you see the the. It, it, it is going to be ultimately immersive technology will need to be will will need to be uh, accessed using the most latest gadgets, right? I mean your immersive technology, right? It's like this. I mean, if um, 
I have I have gotten an iPad one. I still remember when it was launched in the US. I it was not even in India. I went to the US and my laptop crashed. So rather than buying a new laptop, I went ahead and bought the iPad. And in that iPad, I don't have a selfie camera. You know, it was a without selfie camera. Why? Because there was no need for us. There was no need for a for a selfie like a video conferencing at that point because we were using Skype, right? Now, over a period of time, if I go click and it still works by the way, even today. So if I know if I now go and click on that iPad on a YouTube, it says sorry, it's not supported. Okay. Similarly. If now comes 10 years later, I want to experience a VR headset and I'm using a, excuse me, I want to experience a metaverse and I'm using a six year old VR headset. Of course, the experience is not going to be good. If I'm using a 10 year old computer, of course, it's not going to be good. So it's always good to be using metaverses or any immersive experiences on the, on the latest hardware uh, or a little better hardware resolution. Experience on the, on the web is very good of, of that of metaverse. I, I really don't see any challenges in that. Right, indeed. So uh, also, uh, Rahul, that the metaverse today, it uh, some of the things that it is capable of is uh, giving you a virtual infrastructure. So maybe some physical infrastructure is missing and uh, that gives you a virtual infrastructure. So something that we're doing in education at IDS is to, uh, is to reach out to more people who don't have physical infrastructure, they can attend schools and colleges. So that is one aspect of it. And uh, so in, in terms of the things that it can deliver, you know, which is phys which is missing in the physical world or which is more expensive in the physical world. So what are your views on that? And what kind of things can Metaverse deliver in, in that space? In, uh, in one of my recent, um, in one of my most recent um, uh, uh, you know, uh, conferences I, I was attending, one of the very uh, uh, intelligent, uh, uh, a very successful, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneur, um, he was talking about some very good business cases. And one of the things he said to me uh, in that um, debate, said that not every medical college can buy MRI machine. It's going to cost up, uh, like three or five crores, you know. And not every medical college can spend a million dollars go buy a new MRI machine because it's always also used for very limited time, you know. So if you go create on the platform that IDS is building, if you go create an MRI, you know, uh, uh, experience over on the on that, uh, you know, platform, uh, there is absolutely no doubt that rather than spending a million dollars, they can get the similar experience in fact, much better experience on the on your platform, and that could be done in just a few thousands of dollars, you know, if not million. Um, students can collaborate on different types of content. You're looking at integrating uh, augmentation on the on the uh, virtual reality by going ahead and putting some you know uh, different types of um, animations and you know visual discovery and so and so forth uh, things on the content uh, there is absolutely no doubt that metaverse has or immersive experiences have a huge impact uh, when it comes to uh, you know building uh, 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 educational content you know so that's a that's a pretty good stream and uh, a lot of companies are working in it i think um, i think i think but but, but I have a disclaimer on that because what I think is that there is still a huge difference in in why you should look at a virtual reality content which is more 3D and 360 and on the other hand you have got this metaverse thing like I said metaverse is more for a public you know virtual reality is more when you wear a headset or if you want to do a web VR you know for an educational content it's very private content I mean there's no need for you to go put an MRI machine in a Decentraland and have people go and visit Decentraland. I think, I mean, come on, I mean, that's not required. What is required there would be that, hey, if you really want your brand to be, you know, shown over there, kind of things you're doing, maybe you want to attract more people, you know, uh, internationally who are coming over there on that particular, uh, you know, Genesis point, and you just want them to be, you know, excited about it. Great. 
Um, but immersive experiences are here to stay. You know, I, I don't think so that immersive experiences are going anywhere. Uh, and educational content, if you're able to go build universities online where people can walk in and you can have a mentor or any other, you know, a senior leader going into going and doing sessions in the university, that's a great opportunity because doing it in a 2D, like the way we are doing right now, isn't it this boring? compared to how we can do it on a, on a metaverse, right? There's no, there's no doubt about it, yeah? Right, indeed. So also uh, in the physical space today, there, uh, there are a lot of restrictions, like if you want to travel abroad, there's, there's a lot of uh, barriers today. No doubt. And with, no. with metaverse, those barriers are significantly decreased because just uh, with, the, with your internet, just with a virtual infrastructure, you can collaborate and meet in, in, in better ways. So what are your views on that and how Metaverse is going to uh, kind of uh, overcome the challenges in, in the physical world? Select few. There are, there are people today whom I meet. In fact, I have met with, a, with, a, with, with an owner of an event company most, like, most recently, two months back who confidently told me that he has never built a website. I just said, Vanakkam sir, great. Good to know that you have never done a website, you don't have a Facebook handle, you don't have a LinkedIn handle. Good luck to you. You know, there is, there is no need for us to for us to think that we, if we are not on the on the internet, then we are, it's okay. I mean, there's no need for us to do that. I think good or bad is second thing. I'm thinking there's no need. You know? There is no need for us to think that, hey, we have to go find new ways of learning and collaborating with our clients and, and our users in the case of software industry, in the case of, uh, you know, university students and, and, and so on and so forth. There's no need for us to go, go and say, hey, we don't want to do it. We don't have to do it. I think we should always explore, learn, and try new things. The, the same thing happens on the same, the same principle applies on the question that you asked me. Physical infrastructures will exist. The parallel infrastructure have to also exist. Both will exist. This, the flight simulator is a 50 year plus old product. If, if a physical flight, if a physical flight simulator was not required, then we would have at least crashed a minimum thousand planes by now or more. Okay. If a, a company which is doing today, a company, automobile company, which is going and designing new products has been designing the new products on a clay doing casting, right? Or a, or a different, you know, uh, uh, things for doing casting and all that. Well, they are over a period of time changing and they're using mixed reality to collaborate, you know, creating products now virtually. So the so the need for any, any organization to go into the metaverse or create a digital twin of their own, you know, uh, 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 university or a, or a company or whatever, end of the day, it's always going to only add value, you know. Now, physically, whether a person wants to go, absolutely, a person will always go physically. But it doesn't mean he can go all 12 months physically. There's a possibility that I may want him to just come first, physically twice, virtually maybe four times, five times or more. Because human to human connect is still required, you see, in business. Hmm? In business and commerce, we will always have, yeah, COVID pushed us to the limit. And hopefully, God willing, Dubara COVID is not coming, you know. But but I think it's a it's a very gradual, natural again the progression like the word I used before that <clears throat> companies will now start to think of creating district wins. <coughs> Over a period of time, they will they will want to have collaboration on it. They will continue to move their content on it, and over a period of time, this will become a reasonable opportunity that will be very sustainable as well. Right, indeed. So as you very rightly pointed out that 
it's it's not just going to make uh, the physical meetings or the physical locations uh, irrelevant. It's, so now this metaverse has the capacity to enhance what uh, the the physical nature of our meetings of or uh, how we do yeah. things. So how do you think we can build on top of this, like uh, get the best of both the physical world and the virtual world? So with with the metaverse, you don't have to uh, restrict yourself to even providing just a 3D space. There are a lot of lot many things that can be done with it because you're not bounded by many of the restrictions of the physical world. So how do you think metaverse is going to enhance our physical lives? So metaverse is metaverses are going to definitely enhance. You know. So let's look at uh, let's look at what's going on today. Um, we've gotten. Uh, start with this, right? Start with the first example. Um, people couldn't meet. People couldn't meet. Uh, friends couldn't meet because one is in Singapore, one is somewhere in US, one is somewhere in India. Blah blah blah, and they couldn't meet, uh, you know, in person or, or for, for 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 whatever reason they want to still meet virtual. Uh, a company called Exclosable launched NFT-based penthouse. They're very popular, very popular. At least I have been seeing their posts and you know everything else around their NFTs. Um, and they have penthouses. They're going and doing party over there. Now it doesn't mean that they will do party every day over there. But it's not a bad idea to create that asset and give it to people who want to try it out. HM already has a store in the metaverse. They are, they, they are putting together those, you know, they are they are going ahead and putting together those experiences of H&M on the metaverse because they still want their brand to be visible when the Gen Z, the Web3 community continues to build. They are, there are people who are uh, selling NFTs, right, left, right and center because they are, there are galleries now on the metaverse where people can go and transact and they can go buy art and that is a... That is not a that is not any kind of scam. I, I still don't understand why people become so negative about the NFT as a scam. I think it's all about collectible. And if somebody wants to collect what he wants to collect, I mean it is what it is. You know? Um, in the India's in the India's 80% of India's homes, we have gotten a cabinet on one of the walls in either a drawing room or a dining area where our Parents or our spouses have kept things um, which they have bought over years and they are just lying over there inside and they are things which are like ek aage, ek type they have kept it, right? Uh, you always kept things which you have just bought from some, uh, let's say I have traveled to a country and I have bought a flag of the country or something. I can always go and keep it as a collectible with me because it is what it is. Um, organizations are organizations are uh, creating those you know digital assets for them uh, for more than recall more collect more you know community building and those kind of things so the, the context of the so therefore the context if 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 anything i i believe that it's a journey you know i think the journey will continue as we move ahead and there is going to be an experience creation for the community hmm? and that over a period of time newer and newer business cases will come out we are still at the tip of the iceberg we absolutely are sitting on the tip of the iceberg we are moving towards a creator economy every single day we are going towards a collectible eco economy every single day we are going towards decentralization and blockchain based transactional systems on a day to day basis and on top of it experience has to be built whether in the form of dApps or whether in the form of metaverse experiences or NFTs end of the day either it is going to be visual or transactional but there is no third thing in the world and why not move from a 2D to a 3D world I mean why not we are we are we are all aware that 3D is more visual, 3D is more immersive, 3D is more interactive, 3D is more is more and more better, you know. So it, it's just moving into that direction and look at the next maybe one year or two and you will find some of those most exciting experiences that 
today are being in the in the building stage will come out and it's going to be more and more exciting that's uh, great to know Raj. so also now you mentioned the blockchain aspect of it or the nft aspect of it so how does the metaverse uh, interact with these concepts and blockchain and uh, how what is the role of blockchain and nft in metaverse uh, blockchain uh, um, is the fundamental uh, baseline of uh, running a decentralized uh, economy and uh, whether is it a layer one or a layer two you know whether is it ethereum or or any other or solana or others i think at the end of the day they are always going to be the baseline you know tech stacks um, which is which is going to power this factory <clears throat> um, NFTs are collectibles. NFTs uh, uh, do not really have a, a utility right now, but they are. But there are companies or individuals who are uh, who are trying to create a utility around NFT. Like for example, I gave you the exa uh, I, I was talking about earlier uh, on the on the on the um, uh, Gary V. Uh, the you know the concert that he did. And he converted those um, NFTs uh, uh, tickets to NFTs, and today those NFTs could be are tradable. You know, uh, on the on uh, at the same time, I met up with a very interesting entrepreneur uh, called Zo Hostel, which is a hostel uh, you know uh, chain, and they also have their NFT. You know, they provide concierge services. I also uh, know a lot of people who are trying to build utilities uh, of the NFTs. And NFTs again are going to be based on low gas fee blockchains and uh, low gas fee blockchains, and most likely NFT marketplaces are the ones who are going to <clears throat> who are going to most likely control the the NFTs audience because Vazirx is not really getting audience from maybe Russia or. I'm not sure about it, but I'm just speaking about generalized, you know, Bazirx is a very reputable name in the NFT industry or, or general Web3, you know, and I will respect them. Uh, but, but of course, compared to other platforms like OpenSea, for example, you know, or others, of course, the audience are different. So if presumably uh, we look at the nft marketplaces being based on certain blockchains uh, they are they are, their numbers is outgoing on a day-to-day -day basis um, there are companies which are coming up with uh, nft white label uh, products like one of the one of the recent examples i saw was an nft kali uh, this is platform i i went through it i met up with one gentleman who is handling that product and they uh, very nicely done product. You know, I think it's still in making. It's still not that mature, but it's it's in the it's in the process. So uh, a lot of white label NFT, you know, uh, websites are going to come up and all that. So NFTs are here to stay. They they also work or they also operate on on a certain blockchain. Um, so so connection between the NFT and blockchain is very much established. You know, metaverses have a little more integration to it. They are not as transactional as NFTs because I can always load my content as NFTs on the metaverse platforms. Number one, number two, I can always pre-mint them and mint them and have people mint them or bid buy whatever transact commerce you know to be done on that. On the other hand, metaverse also gives me the opportunity to put those NFTs that I'm that I've launched separately in the digital asset that I've got you know, on the on, uh, on the platform. And if it's a decentralized uh, metaverse, that's a great news because even today, uh, the DAO of Decentraland, the two founders of Decentraland are no more active, uh, actively doing and taking any decisions on Decentraland. It's the DAO, you know, and DAOs are going to play a huge role, you know, in establishing the fact that blockchain is sustainable, blockchain is here to stay, blockchain, Dapps are the ones which are the future, and uh, I think as we move ahead, we just are waiting for uh, more and more people to come in, more and more people to come and you know contribute to the community, and uh, and as it moves ahead, I think metaverse, blockchain, NFTs, and further other Dapps are all going to be in the same place. It is a humongous opportunity of learning, uh, a humongous opportunity of 
contributing and a humongous opportunity in terms of the ROI that we can get from a Web3 community as, as a whole. Right, indeed. So uh, uh, also, like, uh, as you've mentioned, summarizing it a little bit. So we have a different set of community, Web3 community who wants done, who wants things done in a different way, in a more decent life way. So they own more of their content, they own more of their data. And so now we have blockchain uh, enabling that kind of a community, uh, a sense of decentralization, a sense of ownership. And top of that, uh, we are building uh, a metaverse uh, experience. So I think that is the kind of thing, uh, the kind of ecosystem that is coming up. So what is your comment on this entire ecosystem as such and uh, how this is uh, going to shape up in, in the near future? I think it's it's shaping up as we speak. You and me are talking over the weekend, you know, um, and uh, you are taking the initiative of, you know, uh, creating uh, people, uh, content around uh, concepts, people, uh, you know, where they're good at, uh, propagating the Web3 uh, messaging out in the market. Um, and like I said, there's a contribution, there is a huge contribution opportunity, you know, for, for, for anyone. Uh, number one so i think guys who are contributing then just consuming have to be more and more you know and no no tech ever evolved in the way the web3 is evolving it's it's amazing when you go to web3 related events right it's so amazing you are you're you're finding people who are going away from the web web2 to web3 or they are propagating web3 as a whole but still they have to go and go and publish the information on the web too. You see, that that <clears throat> that is where the, the, that intersection is where I see the, the day that intersection becomes lesser and lesser dependent on the web two, the web three community will take over from them. Right, right. So also, you know what, uh, do you think uh, this these opportunities in metaverse mean for a country like India? If we have a large population. There's a lot of people who don't have access to good physical infrastructure, and still a lot of people are coming uh, to the internet today. So, what is what is the opportunity for uh, a country like India here? Oh wow, that is. Uh, I think India India has the opportunity of becoming the metaverse capital of the world. Everyone is talking about it. Everyone is talking about it. India has the humongous opportunity because not only that we are the biggest content creators, don't forget we are also one of the biggest content consumption, you know, destinations in the world. You know, I mean, that's why that's why Meta opened the first office uh, in Gurgaon, the Meta Lab, you know, because they want to target Indian uh, Indian consumers. There are absolutely no other, they, they, where, is the, where is the next population? I mean, are we saying that we're going to go to China? you know and go create competency of that same in china uh, i don't think so i mean are you going to find so many so many software developers going creating or engineering graduates uh, out there in china who have english proficiency to the, to the extent that indians have i don't think so so you are there is there is a lot there is definitely going to be the new engineering uh, uh, the new engineering faculties to be made for the Web3 site. Uh, I am working with uh, a few colleges right now who are essentially wanting to create a Web3 and a Metaverse, Web3 and a Metaverse uh, stream for students. You know, so like AI ML has evolved over the last few years, the Metaverse Web3 blockchain is also evolving the same the same way. You know, India has the most critical role to play in the Web3 uh, economy because I mean there are there are hundred reasons I can give you one of the reasons is look at the look at the mass of population which is the youth in India you know ready to try they, they all want to become millionaires without doing nothing <laughs> Web3 is the opportunity right for the next billion dollar company why not why not? If we have got more millionaires and got more billionaires, it's a great opportunity for the country, right? As a whole. So, so I think 
I think everyone talks about it. I mean, I'm not the only one saying that, hey, metaverse is, India has the opportunity of becoming a metaverse capital. I mean, I truly believe in it. I think a lot of other business leaders like me also believe in it and they're all talking about it, working towards it. Right, that's, uh, that's great to know. So one uh, key difference that uh, uh, I could see with Web3 and the onset of internet. So uh, the, when the internet was being built, it was quite a close uh, kind of a, an evolution where it was happening in a very close space with with few participants who are able to build build on build on it. But with Web three, we see a very decentralized kind of a performance, and it's not it's not happening at in any one particular location. It's happening at a very global level, and uh, and the difference is that uh, a lot of emerging economies today, like Africa, India, or South Asia, they are very big on Web three. They are the adoption is uh, over there is uh, is happening very rapidly so what are your views on on this redistribution uh, that it might bring uh, uh, in the economy in the economic order or in the in the technological capacity that the world have today um uh, many 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 things uh, here many 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 things um you see um, I, I mean like I said, right? I mean, I'm, I'm it's such a general question, but I don't want to compare Africa uh, as a whole to India and as a whole to Asia Pacific. I'm just thinking that the, the way that businesses will transform themselves at the speed that they will transform themselves, okay, will define who becomes the metaverse capital in, in the world. Let me put it this way. If businesses in Africa had the opportunity to digitally transform themselves over the years, of course, the ecosystem of the tech folks and the other guys would have been created there already. Um, one of the one of the guys whom I remember about a year and a half two back, uh, just while I speak to you, I could recall that um, a company that is owned by Microsoft and players like Microsoft, okay, has got one of the huge bases of, I think, about 500 to 1,000 people in Accra, which is the capital of Ghana in West Africa. But the same Microsoft in India has got over 100,000, I don't know more, with the largest base of Microsoft, non-US non employees are based out of India. You know, they, they, I think the captives in India, when they will go create the, comp, the capability, that capability has to be created in the, in the economy, which not only is a creator economy, but also is a huge consumption economy. So it can move in whichever direction because it's all about first mover advantage, isn't it? Doesn't make sense? Indeed, indeed. So yeah, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Sure. Rahul. So uh, with that, uh, Rahul, thank you very much for uh, appearing on our show today. And it was uh, great to interact with you. Absolutely a pleasure, Pratik. Thank you. Have a great day and have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.